Okay, so item charges, oh boy, we ended up going that direction and now we're doing a lot of item charge videos. I was only gonna do two, but then I was thinking about a scenario that might be very helpful. Item charges is a very powerful concept in Business Central, so why not? Why don't we look at that? So the scenario is that we sell something, let's say it's uh, coffee beans. Uh, and we have a sale of 100 pounds, maybe at, let's say $10, the unit price is $10, so it's gonna be $1,000, right? Total price. So that's uh, a sale going out. And then uh, the customer calls us and says, hey, you know what? Uh, 10 pounds of those 100 pounds are bad. They are expired. And uh, obviously we should have been lock tracking everything and making sure we're not sending expired product and all that. But what we're, we're gonna tell them is, hey, just throw away those 10 pounds and we're going to give you a credit. Now, the way we do a credit, we do a credit many ways. But what we would like to do is reduce the uh, price of this product. So I don't want to reduce the quantity that went out. I wanted to show 100 pounds going out. But I want to just reduce the price, just give him a discount. Maybe he's going to use those 10 pounds. Maybe he was able to like make some coffee for the restaurant that's okay with expired beans or something. I don't know who would be that today. But anyways, um, so uh, what we'll do is we'll do a credit demo. with something called item charge. So a sales credit model. Uh, and it's gonna be for one, and it's gonna be 10 pounds times 10, so it's $100. So the quantity is one, and the price or the amount is gonna be $100. And we're gonna apply it to this sale. Right? So what will happen is um, the unit price and the total will go down. So the unit price will go down to $9 and the total will go down to 900 So this, again, with timing, this might have happened first of, you know, let's, uh, let's just say 10th of January 19th. This might have happened 19th of January 2019. And so you can see the reduction in price at the correct time. This then happens at the 19th. So that's gonna be nice because if you're running a sales report, if you actually gave a sales report uh, before this credit happened, then you can justify that it was run on a certain day and there was a credit that came in. And if you look at T accounts, if you're accounting centric, uh, you have AR, and sales, I'm just gonna, or revenue, just gonna do that. And um, so you have this $1,000 in AR and the sale of $1,000, that's the sale, that happens. And then you get a credit for $100 later. So it, it, it works just fine like that. Um, so accounting wise, it comes out great and since it's a sales credit bill. But the big deal here is that it's applied after the fact and it lowers the unit price. So it's a good way to give credit and it's reflected in your inventory reports, the credit. If you would have done here something called GL account, done the same thing, and would have shot this to a GL account, then all your inventory report would have shown a thousand dollar sale even though you gave a credit on it and if you actually do it towards the GL account in on the sales credit memo we have no idea that it applied to this transaction so item charge is a, is a really good instrument to make this happen so I'm going to show you how that's done in the system uh, and I hope you were following this craziness over here let's take a look so let's take a look at the system. Um, we're gonna go ahead and issue a sales order, uh, just like we talked about in the, on the whiteboard. 
uh, again to the Ethereum Corporation. Uh, and it's for the coffee beans. It's out of the East location. And it's a hundred pounds, ten dollars a pound, thousand dollars. So I'm just going to go ahead and post that and ship that out of the inventory. So the product now leaves the inventory and is at a datum's uh, warehouse. And they come back to us and say that 10 pounds were expired. So I think we can give them a credit for the 10 pounds. That would be great. So instead of actually giving them a credit um, straight into a GL, what I'm going to do is go ahead and issue a sales credit. So just go in here and go into sales credit memos and using an item charts to apply to the uh, so I'm just go ahead here at datum corporation uh, coffee beans east oops did not want to do that let me just go ahead and fix that delete this and change this to an item charge. And so we can call this sales allowance, but we're just gonna say it's a sales credit. I'll just have quantity one. Location doesn't really matter. It's for $100. And here I'm gonna go ahead and assign the item charge to the uh, shipment that we just did. So go here in the function. I always get this wrong here. Get shipment lines. And I have a list of all shipment lines right here. There's a way to filter this, but I know it's the last one. So I'll just pick that and I'll assign it again right here. Gets assigned. Hit OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and post this. So $100 are credited. Actually, let me just go ahead and post normally right here. That was a new feature I didn't know about. All right, now we post that and now it's posted. So if we go ahead into the items right here, and go into my coffee beans and go into let me see the item actually let's just get straight into it uh history nope oh, it's not there where is it navigate history items entries here we go ledger entries so now we have all of the transactions for this item and you can see that we sold um, 100, but the sales amount is 900, right? So we just have two transactions here. First one is positive adjustment, which I, I just positively adjusted inventory into the East location. And then we sold it. But we know the sales amount wasn't 900, it was 1000, but there was a credit. So if I click on here, I can see there are two transactions um, one of them is the direct sale out for a thousand dollars and the other one is the hundred dollar credit so that's going to lower our unit price to uh, nine dollars so that's how item charges work uh, as a credit sales credit and it's very effective because as you can see this happens on the item level and it's in the item ledger entries. So if you're reporting out of the item ledger entries, you have full information. You don't need to go into another table or into another list. So that's why I would prefer doing it this way.